Hello, I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady and in this video I'm going to explain how we teach short division to children one-to-one. -one. And by short division I mean division by numbers between two and nine, which is what we expect from children by the time they're nine. I'll explain how children learn to do short division with base 10 apparatus so that they deeply understand it. Then we'll explore how to teach children the formal notated method for short division. I'll talk about some of the challenges children face as they try to learn short division and how we overcome them. And finally, I'll talk about how we ensure children become fluent in short division and with their division tables results. Before you start this video, it's a really good idea if you understand base 10 apparatus. So if you're not sure about that, here's a link to that video. And it's also a great idea if you've watched the previous video to this one, which is on the foundations of division. So here's a link to that video now. Okay, let's make a start by looking at this division, 84 divided by four. First of all, we want to build the 84 with base 10 apparatus. And we can ask our child that we're working with to have a go at that. Now, if they really struggle, it's probably because they're thinking about division as being counting how many fours there are. And that's difficult to do with this apparatus because we're going to need to break each 10 into ones to be able to count fours. And that takes a long time. If they want to do that, it's a good idea to let them do it until they find that the answer is 21. There's 21 groups of four. And then to point out there's a much quicker way, which is to think of division as being about sharing fairly. We want to share our 84 fairly between, say, four people or into four groups. And if we make a start with that, well, we can put two tens in each group and a one in each group. And we can see the answer is 21. And if we then notate that, the 84 goes in the division. Four is the number we're dividing by. And we're sharing fairly. So if we've got eight tens and we share them fairly between four people, each person gets two tens. And then our four ones, each person got one one, so our answer is 21. Now when children just see the notation, this is confusing because it looks like there's just a single 21. It becomes a process that's quite difficult to visualise. So it's really important to work with the apparatus. We want to see that this 21 is about there being four of them and this visual image here links straight back to the multiplication we would use to check our answer. We would check it by puzzling out 21 times 4. 21 lots of 4 should give us back our 84, which it does, because we got the right answer. Now let's change this calculation slightly. What if this had been 81 divided by 3? 81 divided by 3. Well, as we try to share this fairly, we can give each group two tens. But then we're left with this 21 that won't share. So what we need to do is exchange these tens for ones. So we have 21 ones, which we can then share. 21 shared fairly between three groups is seven. So seven of the ones go to this group. Seven go to this group and seven go to this group. So 81 divided by three is 27. And we can check that 3 lots of 27 is 81 if we put them back together. So let's notate that now. We're dividing 81 by 3. We had 8 tens and we tried to share them into three equal groups. Well, we could put two tens in each group, but the other two tens we couldn't share. 
So we needed to break them into ones. That gave us 20 ones to add to our one one. 21 ones. We divided them into three equal groups and there were seven in each group. Therefore, our answer is 27. We want to do plenty of work with apparatus with children, connecting the work with apparatus with their notation. And gradually we can put that apparatus aside and imagine it, and discuss it. But if things go wrong, we should go back to the apparatus. Let's look at this calculation. 473 divided by 7. Well, we have four 100s and we're going to try and share them into seven groups. Well, we can't without breaking them into tens. So when we break four 100s into tens, we get 40 tens to add to our seven tens that are already there. So we have 47 tens now to play with. We're going to try and share them into seven equal groups. Well, seven sixes are 42. And that's as far as we can go. So we get six tens in each group. That uses 42 of the tens. So we have five tens left that we can't share. So we break them into ones. And that gives us 50 ones to add to our three ones. So now we're trying to share 53 ones between seven equal groups. Well, seven sevens are 49. And that's as far as we can go. So we put seven ones in each group and we had four that we couldn't share. And at this level, we simply write that as a remainder. There were four that left that we were unable to share. So our answer is 67 remainder four. And if we put back together seven lots of 67 and add in the extra four, we should get the answer of 473. That's quite difficult to follow without apparatus, so hopefully that's given you some insight into how difficult it is for children if you move on really quickly. Slow down, do plenty of practice. For remainders, there are actually six ways of handling them at primary school, and I'll come back to that in my series for nine to 11 year olds. So what problems do children face as we tackle problems like these ones? They are working left to right for the first time with column addition and subtraction and short multiplication. We were working right to left with the ones first. So it's a big change. And at this stage, they're going to need to get used to swapping between working left to right and right to left whenever they do division and whenever they go back to one of the other calculations. So it's really important to pay attention to that and to delve into it. If a child makes a mistake and starts with the ones, they'll get very confused very quickly because it just doesn't work. Lean into that, do that with them, let them come to discover that it doesn't work and that it's much easier to work left to right. And really highlight the fact that division works left to right, whereas addition, subtraction and multiplication all work right to left. In general, if children make silly errors, send them back to the apparatus. The other reason children may struggle is that they're not brilliant on their division results from their tables. So when they're trying to do the individual divisions within a short division, they're really struggling. Their brain is maxing out on computing power and that causes catastrophic failure. If you're working with a child at home, I'm sure you know the symptoms of this break time. It's really helpful, therefore, to spend a lot of time working on divisions by two. So they're only having to focus on their division results in the two times table. And they're going to become really fluent at them because they're doing them again and again. And then I would focus on divisions by five because they're much easier than the other results. And then work through three, four, six, seven, eight and nine in whichever order you prefer. But I do recommend you separate them out and work on them one at a time, unless your child knows them inside out and really doesn't need that, in which case it's fine to mix them up. You're watching your child, you know what they're coping with, but if they are having meltdowns about short division because it's just too much work, split them 
into the divisions by the different numbers. And in the next couple of weeks, I'll be publishing some worksheets on the usual sites which do that. A Facebook group is Expert Primary Maths Teaching. And if you click on files and look down, you should find worksheets for short division by each number. I'm aiming to have all of those live by the end of May 2020. I have a friend, Jeff Kutcher, who's in lockdown and he's working on them really hard. What a star he is. All for free download. And of course, you can just make up your own as well. So your takeaways from this video is that when you introduce short division, it is division as sharing fairly. And you need to take time to make sure the child you're working with is comfortable with that, that they're not trying to count groups, that they know for short division they're doing sharing fairly. They need to do it with base 10 apparatus and become confident with it. So they see all the groups that they've split their number into before they move to the notated method where they're just going to get straight to the answer, the size of one of the groups and not really see the structure of the multiplication that you can use to check your division. At this stage, if there is a remainder, if there's ones left over that won't share, we just write R and the number that are left to show that remainder. And it's really wise for most children to work on divisions by one number at a time. So they get loads of practice of the individual division results by a particular number and become completely fluent at them before they move on to division by the next number and become fluent at divisions in that multiplication table. If you have any questions about this video, please type them in the comments below the video. If you'd like to be able to find this YouTube channel again, please subscribe to it and click on the bell. And if you know anyone else who you think would benefit from these videos, please share them. Let's make sure all our children are thriving with maths. And that's not gonna happen unless all the adults who are working with them really understand what they're doing. In the next video, I'll explain how we teach the foundations of fractions. I really hope you'll join me for that video soon. Bye for now.